G'day guys, welcome to another episode of the Blacklist Sessions. My name is Jay Sini and I have a great guest today. We've got Jamie Matthews from 1300 Blinds. Yeah. How are you, it. mate? Great. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, anytime. So, uh, Jamie runs a great business. So, rather than me telling you about what it is, you know, let's um, talk about, about uh, 1300 Blinds. Yeah. So, I run, well, I'm the managing director of 1300 Blinds Franchising. So, my role is really the, the full operations of the company and, and bringing on new businesses uh, to work underneath our banner. Um, so, we, we are primarily a blind windows furnishing company. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we started off and that was successful and we've developed programs where we can basically replicate that anywhere in Australia and, and get people up and running and making money right away. So. Yeah. So, when you started the business, was it kind of like, you know, we're going to start this for ourselves or did you go into it with like a franchise sort of mindset where like, we just want to, you know, create this franchise sort of model? Yeah. Well, it started off like my family had a blind business for 20 years um, and we realized the traditional structures for those businesses weren't really working in modern day. Uh, so, we were planning on restructuring and it took a number of years uh, and look, the catalyst for it all really was COVID. That really t forced our hand. We were already investigating it, but when COVID hit, we were like, not nah, need to reset, remodel. So, that's where the franchising really took off. We basically just completely changed everything. I took over the reins and, and went running with this system. Yeah, well, I think that there's certainly a lot that uh, potential uh, business owners and, and people that are looking to get into a franchise could learn from what you guys have done because it's been quite successful. So, I think it'd be really cool to talk a little bit about, you know, how the business has grown over the last couple of years and what you guys have managed to achieve. Yeah, so, uh, look, we're, we're up to just over 10 locations now with franchises so it's expanded quite well um, the last couple of years have really been setting the foundations having a solid foundation to work upon so all the systems I've, I've put in a lot of effort into automating all the workflows uh, mm -hmm. to really make it easy for people to come into to learn the systems to get out there and do the work uh, without being bogged down with like, how do I run a business? How do I get customers? How do I order a blind? How do I get information about these products? Like we take green people and give them everything they need to succeed in the industry. Yeah, brilliant. Because I think that's a lot of the fear of a lot of people is, you know, they, they want to go into business, they kind of want to have that flexibility, but it's quite daunting, you know, when you, you jump head first into a business because you've got like all your accounting you have to worry about, potential staffing things, yeah. how do I make sure I'm getting clients, like all of these different facets that go into a business, but you guys kind of just make it a bit more straightforward for people getting involved. Yeah, we pretty much take care of all of that for you. We, um, The great thing with our model compared to other franchises though, franchises though is that we still offer a lot of flexibility so rather than you know this is the hard and fast rule of how you're going to operate we allow a lot of flexibility for each person to put their own spin on it um, consult with new ideas and development of their own strategies um, but we can give them that sort of guidance to be like well we've done that that didn't work yeah <laughs> you might want to rethink your idea um yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. So. For sure, yeah. So, like every industry in Australia, it's probably quite competitive, I could imagine. So, what is it that you do uh, with 1300 blinds that allows you to stand out from your competitors and, and grab those leads and, and get sales? Yeah, so, a, a few factors. One of them is our branding. Uh, you know, 1300 blinds, it's, it's very easy to remember and recognize and contact. So, that gives an advantage to people straight away. Um, the biggest point of difference as far as our service goes is when we restructured the system, we, we realized there's a problem in industry using contractors. So you'd normally, if you wanted to get your blinds done, it would be a contract salesperson would come out. Their only concern was getting commission. So they just wanted to sell at any cost. They didn't actually have the skills to install the blinds or have all those that information on what the job involves. And then you would get a contract installer out that would have no communication with that rep and there would be mix-ups and problems and errors. And that traditional method caused a lot of 
friction, a lot of problems. Um, with our system, our franchises do it from start to finish. They'll come out, sell the job to you, and then install the job. So it's a seamless transition, seamless system where you get much better service and uh, a lot more support. Yeah, that makes sense. So branding's a really big one. Uh, what's the kind of marketing that you guys do that really um, attracts people to, to come to you? Yeah, so in franchising or the, the to each like store, I guess. Yeah, I guess more more to like, um, I'd say each franchising, like is there uh, like say paid ads or is organic content? You know, how are you you running that that's had the most success for you? Yeah, so we do a mixture of both. Um, you know, a lot of it is paid marketing. So we find images that attract people and offers that get them excited to contact us and book in appointments. Um, so that gives us a very steady flow. Uh, that gets supplemented and improved on by socials. So by posting, by getting reviews, uh, those things really increase the effectiveness of your paid marketing. Because if I just do a paid marketing ad, generally it will be quite expensive per lead. Mm. Um, if you supplement that by supporting it with organic and reviews and traffic, um, they actually perform at a much better rate so yeah yeah i think that people seem to really overcomplicate it a lot when they're they're talking about marketing sales you know there's all these techniques and things yeah but really at the end of the day i think you can break it down to building trust with with the person and you know we have all these methods of doing it whether it be reviews or yeah. people see you through organic content or they see you through paid ads you know the more times you can see them and, and develop a rapport with your customer then you know that's going to lead to more growth in the business yeah exactly like overcomplicating it is i think the biggest problem with business. People do it all the time. We've got a saying, which is uh, kiss. I don't know if you've heard of that statement. <laughs> yep, yeah. keep, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's the best thing you can do. I, I'm, a, you know, I'm a fan of science and physics and they talk about a concept, which is if you can't explain something simply, then you don't understand it well enough. And that's the same with business. At the end of the day, business is just about solving people's problems. And, you know, if you can solve people's problems, then you're on the way to, to having a successful business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, awesome. So, <laughs> we'll move on to the next question. So, we've talked about, um, you know, the model, the franchise model. Um, was there a particular reason that you went with that as opposed to something else? What was it that attracted you guys to developing that model? Developing franchising versus, yeah. Um, yeah, it was really to create an approach where you could have your local uh, blind company support you from start to finish. Mm. I think that was where the biggest inspiration for it came is solving problems, like you were saying before, mm. keeping it simple and solving problems. Because we had a very big, successful blind business and there were a lot of problems with that that's the service level side of it, which created a lot of stress. And I think it's very important that if things cause stress in your business, that's a sign that they're not going right, that there's a problem. Um, so to fix that stress and fix that customer service, we really had to break down those barriers between the sales reps and the, the fitters and join them together. So Yeah, so it kind of sounds like um, it's an issue with like scaling and you know you found a way to overcome the scaling issue because that can always be a big thing like when you bring on extra people to complete jobs you know no one's gonna do it as well as what you do and put the love in it that you do for your own business so is i, I guess you could say that's one of the ways that you help to overcome one of those scaling issues it, yeah it really was a scaling issue and because it we developed that system where someone could sell and install it and the issue then was that we were creating such good um, good operators that they would then go and start their own business and then we would generate just creating competitors because we we're giving them all the skills they needed to run their own business <laughs> start to finish so and I think that's why traditionally the the um, our industry actually tries to prevent the lines from communicating with each other from the sales to the installers because they're scared of generating competitors um, so that's why we went to franchising was like we're, we're getting great people and we need to give them an opportunity that allows them to stay mm. and to 
continue on with us. So. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So, you know, you've got two two sides of the marketing, you know, you've got um, the, I guess, the marketing to the potential franchisees yeah. and you've got the customers. So, have those um, marketing styles been pretty much the same and you've just sort of changed the messaging or have you tried completely different things to connect with those two sets of people? Oh, we're always experimenting, yep. always trying new things, new strategies, um, different approaches. Uh, like for the organic side, like every time we bring on a franchise, they bring their own spin on things that, that gives us new skills as well. Uh, a good example of that is one we just opened up in Echuca. Uh They did a campaign of introducing themselves when they got there, when they opened the doors. They just did it on their local, um, local groups. They posted there saying, hey, we've just joined this company. Um, we're really excited to help the local community. We're doing a great introduction or offer for them. Uh, and then they shared that across their pages and friends' pages and it went crazy, went wild. <laughs> so uh, I had companies that were there contacting me from, um, from you know, Victoria here in Sydney going, what's going on? You, you're a huge, you're everywhere. <laughs> and that was completely free. We, we had this big marketing spend prepared for them. Um, and this free organic marketing they did blew it out of the water. So. Yeah, it, it's truly unbelievable. Like Wade and, and I were running the numbers the other day. You know, the videos that we've done have gener generated well in excess of like 10, 11, 12 million views. And we only counted like seven artists that we've worked with. And I was adding up how much that, we, that would actually cost in paid marketing yeah. spend. And it's like millions of dollars. It's so much. And I can guarantee we didn't charge those people millions of dollars. Yeah. So, you know, in our in our experience, it's just been such a great way of, um, you know, generating traction for what, for what you're doing, especially if the content you're putting out is really engaging and interesting and i think that's the key is to you know take uh, sorry give something to people that they can take away yeah yeah definitely yeah so definitely. what's the plans with uh with the expansion there so we're up up to 10 is there a, a goal that you guys are aiming for well yeah we've mapped out about 150 locations so there's quite a lot of room um and what we've actually found is that each of those locations we've mapped out have performed better than we probably expected uh, so the volumes there to potentially be higher as well um, but we really like to sort of be selective of who we bring on and really bring them in, into a part of the family it is a family run business mm. so we, we like to make sure the people we're working with have a similar at attitude and and have that opportunity to grow as well so we don't want to restrict the areas too much for sure yeah it's always a delicate balancing act between growing at, at max rate versus you know getting the right people yeah and, and growing at all else so that's not our plan like i you know i could have had 50 locations by now um but i didn't want to see people going out there and failing that mm. that to me is number one i did not want to just bring people on that i didn't have the confidence in in it succeeding I, i'm not here just to make money off off selling franchises I'm, I'm here to really look at the long term and build successful businesses and a successful respected network absolutely because that, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day for any business to be successful over the long term it's got to be sustainable for all all parties involved you know like in in our case if we were just making terrible videos and charging a fortune like people wouldn't come back yeah. but you know we we work with people very consistently like we shoot four five six like multiple videos going on because the results that they that they get out of that you know, are, are really worth it. And I think it's, it's very much the same with every industry. Yeah. You know, it's got to be sustainable and, uh, you know, you've got to set people up to succeed. Yeah, 100%. Um, like 50% of our work comes from repeat and referral. Uh, you know, it's a key part of growing the business. You can't just be completely reliant on marketing. Um, you, know, you can get lazy sometimes in, in business in your own success and you just see the leads coming in because you're paying for them and and then all of a sudden you, you're like oh it's not going as well as it could be it's because you, you've lost what you know you started with which is 
looking after your customer and building those those clients that are going to go to bat for you and find you better clients and grow your business that way that that's the key yeah absolutely like it's it's such an interesting thing but i always look to tesla as a great example of what can be done because they've spent zero dollars on paid marketing yeah you know they spend everything sort of around that whether it be an event or organic content and of course the product ends up really selling itself because people just talk about it all the time and you know, you really cannot underestimate uh, the power of word of mouth in uh, any industry across the entire globe. Yeah. No, it's it's our most powerful tool as a business owner, um, getting supporting clients. Like, I don't believe you can have business and do it alone, whether it's you know, family support or your customers. That they're in it with you um, and they're your, your biggest asset because they're going to promote you and... and tell their family, go to dinners and go, yeah, you've got to use this guy. You know? uh, and that's how your business really grows and it becomes like an exponential growth. It, it starts slow, but once you've got enough people out there that love your service and, and promote you, then it just goes like wildfire. Absolutely. So, who do you think is like the ideal franchisee? Like if you had to like have a picture of someone in your mind that you thought these guys would be absolutely perfect you know guys or gals that want to do um a 1300 blinds franchise yeah what would they look like yeah so um really they just got to be determined and consistent uh, i think in business that's the most important thing is, is just keeping that energy always wanting to learn and always wanting to do a good job and improve uh, those are the people you, you need are uh, not interested in people who are like oh, okay yeah i get these promised of work-life balance that we offer and that so they want to come and work less and and just sort of do it as a side thing um you won't succeed in that way you, you just got to have that drive and, and that passion to want to always be improving really that's the, the number one thing yeah, I totally agree. Like, that's been my experience as well. Like, running this business, especially, like, the first probably four or five years, like, it was just hammer down, you know. So, some of those weeks, um, I'd be working 100 hours. Yeah. You know, and obviously, you can't do that forever. It's not sustainable, but especially in the, the initial phase, like, you really just got to put the miles in to, to get it done because, you know, there's a lot of lot of aspects involved with, with business and, um, you know, especially when you're new to business, um, or new to like franchising, there's a lot of things that you don't know. So, it might take you a little bit longer to start with. Correct, but yeah. over time, you get these systems and processes in place and it's just like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like any skill when you start out with it. If I wanted to learn to draw, for example, I'm a shocking drawer. <laughs> it looked terrible, but you Same. put the hours in, you put the work in and you get good at it. Like people have this belief that people are just born with these amazing skills, but nothing comes for free like that you might start off better but that could be a transferred skill from something else you've learned but you've just got to put in the time and, and learn the skill a hundred percent yeah there's um there's a meme which andrea my, my missus showed me the other day and it had this um you know like punter saying oh you're such an amazing musician yeah. you know how did you how'd you do that practice oh my god you must have so much talent how did you get this good Practice. Practice. <laughs> practice, 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 practice. And that's all it comes down to with everything. You know, yeah. you can't can't be expected to be amazing at anything straight up. But, you know, over time, you know, a bit of hard work and, you know, that ends up becoming talent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think um, like a business is the same thing, like your, your social presence, your um, whatever you're doing in business, it starts off slow and the effort you put in, the gains are small, especially in the beginning. It's always very little gains. And then they all compound on each other and then the difference is huge in the end. Um, I'm a soccer fan, you can see the soccer players and just the difference between the number one players and the people just below, the, the amount they get paid differently is huge. Mm. Um, but the skill level between them is very small compared to the next level below. It, the increments you get better are smaller but the return on it is bigger that's right yeah logarithmic <laughs> yes yeah it's it's baffling so those early early stages you, you're getting huge improvements on yourself um but 
smaller returns and it's not until you get really to the top end of that that you actually start seeing those log log <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah absolutely well, tongue tied. yeah those yeah. huge <laughs> huge returns so big time so in terms of costings business is very expensive to run you know there's a lot of outgoings that, mm-hmm. that happen and you know People have to have somewhere to live. So, there's all the costings on, on your own side and, and things like that. So, how do you manage a lot of those costs um, of like incomings and, and outgoings? Like, what's that look like? Yeah. So, I think that's something that I've spent a lot of time on improving and setting up for people because I think it's probably your number one failure in business people can get into business and they might be a skilled chef they might have a trade they might have those skills necessary to run the business successfully and get beautiful reviews they're getting attention but they just don't understand how to deal with cash flow Um, and that's the number one reason businesses fail Uh, so some of the things that i've set up with our franchise that we use is we have a paid up front system. So we don't recommend people get uh, accounts with pretty much anything. Uh, if you can't pay for it, I feel like you shouldn't get it. And that improves it a lot. Uh, Cause a big failing point I see people have is they will be, they'll have like 60, 90 day accounts on things. and business is flowing in, it's looking great, their bank account looks great, uh, then they have a slow month followed by another slow month and all of a sudden they're like, oh wait, I've got these bills from this huge month I did and then they've got no money to pay for it because they've already spent it because it, they just didn't realise it was going to come in, they just thought it was going to flow forever and there was never going to be a dip or a, a turn. Uh, so that's a big key thing to watch for Mm -hmm. uh, and to minimize that as much as as possible Uh, a another key factor um, would be you know spending on what's important to your business so it's okay to spend a lot of money on a tool that you would use every day that that's crucial to your business uh, for you like your, your cameras, your equipment, things like that. Um, but is it crucial to, yeah, I suppose, it, get fancy desks or, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah, really like, going to change the end product, no, is it? No, <laughs> it, it doesn't at all. And we can get carried away with some of those things. It's like the, um, getting worried about your, how you're presented too much or, just wanting these things of signs of success um, when they're really not necessary. It's just fluff for your business, I suppose. Uh, Yeah, definitely. So, there's some pretty good tips, you know, spend where it counts and manage your cash flow effectively because, yeah, as you said, you might have some amazing months where things go really well and then things are a bit slower another month. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you're stuck. Yes. (laughs) Then you're in a bit of trouble. Um, So... Um, you mentioned that you are um, just paying for things up front, like yep. in, in full. Um, are there any other ways that you manage cash flow that's coming in and out? It's cash flow for the business. Um, so, we could try and keep it simple um, without giving too much away of, of our systems. So, basically, if you're doing a job for a customer and you've got to purchase goods for that customer we try to have everything paid up before um, like when we're ordering that product so you don't get caught up in a situation that's often see, seen in our industry where um, people take a deposit from a customer then the bills come in from the previous month they don't have enough money to pay the bills for it and then they get put on stop for their supply lines and then all of a sudden they've got a deposit from a customer but they don't have the goods to install for that customer and they've got to chase money to it's sort of a death spiral i've Mm, seen time and time again from companies in 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 our industry um but as far as managing it it's it's really you've got to plan it out you've got to know what your your expenses are and sort of account for those and look at your profitability points it might be 
okay, I've got X amount of expenses, so that means I need to sell X amount of jobs to cover that. And then after that, that's my money, essentially. Yeah, makes sense. Um, the best thing we did for it, for it though, really, was that pay up front, is not having accounts, because that mm. means the guys have paid for their goods, they've paid for all the expenses of, of the job. When they complete the job, the money they get from that, they know is their money. Mm. It's, there's no strings attached for it. They don't have any hidden charges or, or fees that they would have to pay afterwards. Um, so f I think for most people, that's the best way to manage it. Because it, even people, anyone who's doing their own home finances, you, you'll find bills can sneak up on you and, and whatnot. You, it's better just to be in front of it in and front. be prepared and have a bit of money in the bank ready for, for emergencies. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that the business... Uh, finance is not that different to personal finance, no. to be honest. No, there's a lot of correlation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much the same. You know, a lot of people get caught up in the, the credit card thing and, you know, end up paying 22% interest on a card. And I guess in a lot of ways, you know, that can happen in business as well. Yeah, the, the only difference with business that makes it harder is there's... There's not really any safety nets in there. It's like, you know, you don't pay your power bill at home. The, the company is going to be like, all right, we'll put you on a plan or something like that. In business, it's like, no. Nah, <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later. No, you pay me. Um, you know, that's one hard difference. And the other thing is, you know, if you've got a, a wage, you, you're seeing that same money coming in, you know what you're expecting. In a business, it's not like that. Like I was saying before, you can have three really good months and then suddenly have two quiet months and you know interest rates go up and you're like oh, okay quiet month people get a bit scared off again uh so you've got to be prepared for that you've got to not get carried away and go oh i'm making heaps of money right now you've got to put some away for that rainy day absolutely so given that we are in quite interesting economic times you know there's a lot of um, issues, I guess you could say, around like the housing market and, yep. you know, construction starts are down at one of the lowest levels it's been in a long time. Yep. So, how do you mitigate some of those those risks in, in business? Like, are you sort of beholden a little bit to the economy? I guess we all are in a way, but how do you say mitigate some of those risks to keep the business growing? Again, the, the pay up front system. If you're ahead of your debts, then you can ride the storm. Um, that's probably the, the best thing to do. Uh, on top of that is, you say, let's say the market is down. Say it's down 50%, a huge amount. You might only have a, a 2 3% market share. So you go down to you know, half of what you're on. You just need to do better. <laughs> just get more share. <laughs> that's it. The, the work's still there. There's still... Yeah, half yeah. the amount of work that's there. You just need to take it from your competitors, essentially. Yeah, well, how would you do that? Like, what are some things that have been quite effective um, in your line of work to, to grow your market share? Yeah, so, uh, an effective methods would be that social side of it. Um, you continue marketing. You might even increase marketing. Uh, I think that's, a, that's something that I see often. In business is people go well times are down you know market down 50 percent whatever it is i'm going to reduce my marketing because marketing's getting expensive um and that's probably one of the worst things you can do because when times do get better you're not in the market you're not marketing so you don't see those improvements until your competitors already jumped on them mm -hmm. uh, so you lose market share by doing that uh other other things is it's just doing the basics right just always being in a growth position uh if your business is stagnant then you're a subject to bad times uh mm -hmm. because you can't improve like oh, i've just recently uh, i've you know supplies are telling me yeah things are down i'm hearing stories 25 percent or more down in mm -hmm. industry um we're up 60 percent. so it's just taking those opportunities and, and increasing your market share, always being in that growth mindset. 
Yeah, I think that really is the key, hey? Like, anytime, you know, I need to grow the business, I'm like, well, you know, I need to double down, you know? If there's a month that's a bit slower, it's like, well, obviously, I yeah. need to do more. And it's really interesting because we um, we also have cold emails go out. We um, target a lot of uh, marketing managers at different companies and just yeah. hit them with emails, see if they need content. And I found it really interesting over the last year, a lot of them are not in that position anymore. You yeah, know, okay. They've, they've gotten the sack, which means a lot of companies have actually Cut. decreased their spend. They're cutting marketing, yes. And for me, that's an incredible opportunity. That's it. And that's what I'm finding. As I said, while my industry, I'm being told by manufacturer supplies and raw goods, down. It's down. And we're growing. We're growing. And we're taking those opportunities. That's that's the difference. So, yeah. we're, if the market's down, we're, we're taking market off our competitors. And that's how we're, we're continuing to grow and, and continuing to succeed during that tougher times. That's right. And then when they come around, you know, business will be booming even more. Correct. Yeah. Good times. It will be in a better position. We'll have a bigger share. We'll have, we'll see the opportunity before our competitors do because we're still there. We're still in the trenches, you know, yeah. <laughs> trying to get customers still working hard on it <laughs> That's rather it. than cutting the cost. Yeah. yeah. So, what does success look like to you? Success, um, honestly, it's freedom. That's that's what success is. So, uh, you know, that's a lot of what I instill in our franchisees is to gain that freedom. Um, success is knowing that you're going to have those customers, the customers you've built relationships with, coming back and growing your business that way. So, so that your work life is just more enjoyable. Um, yeah, that's what it is. We, we can saying as well, you know, you, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. So mm. freedom and time, uh, is really the biggest sign of success, success really. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, um, there's a YouTuber, which I, uh, am familiar with. I think it's Iman Gadzi, And he said that there's three pillars of, of that. And it's not only monetary freedom, but you also time freedom and also location freedom. You know, yeah. you can go and do yep. whatever you like. And at the end of the day, you know, we have a, a system, which is in some ways, you know, akin to slavery but nicer you know, where people are forced to work to survive but yep. to overcome that you know if you can find a way using those three pillars yeah you know you've really uh, your freedom yeah in in some respect yeah yeah and it's not necessarily um you know oh, i work less that's not what you know you talk about when you're saying freedom time um it's more about having that freedom to decide when you work or um you might still work 60 hours, 80 hours in a week. That's fine. But you know, if you have something you want to get to, you can take that time. You don't have a, a boss to, to go to and <laughs> yeah. be like, oh, can I take this time? And they, they berate you for, for trying to live your life. <laughs> you know, that's the sign of success. And that, that's what like, franchising offers people uh, is, is that control over their lives while still having an opportunity to to work those hours and get the money they want for their hobbies and their life, yeah, whatever so goals they might be. It's really about living life on your own terms. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, that, that's that's more for the franchising side of it. What I'm selling more than you know, a, a business mm. to make money. There's there's the opportunity there, no doubt. Um, a lot of the guys make really good money, um, mm. but it's just that freedom for them to do what they want to do and when, when they want to do it spend time with the family, have a hobby. You know. uh, I've got guys that uh, play competitive s sports like soccer and things like that. You know, and they, they've just got that opportunity to take the time when they need it. So Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, so, is there anything else that you'd like to add, like some little bits of wisdom that you could potentially leave some potential business owners or uh, people that were looking to get into a franchise? What's something that they could take away? Yeah, I suppose is... Um, Come back down to the, the keeping it simple. Um, I would advise you to understand what you're doing enough that you can describe it in a very simple way. Uh, you could look at marketing, for example. If I was to ask you, well, if you spent $1,000 on marketing, what would you get for that? And a lot of people would be like, oh, it depends. I don't know. I'd put out a newspaper. I'd do this or whatever. And, and I might get a return, might not. Um, when you study 
or look at your business and, and see the returns you get on those things on average is you, you could break that down to a, you know, I know that if I spend a thousand dollars, I'm going to get 10 grand back. Like, it's basically comes down to that simple. You, know, you can complicate things. You can go, well, this strategy has this return and, uh, you know, go into ridiculous detail in it. You could get lost in it. Um, but it, often it comes down to the simplest thing. It's just like, if I do X, I get Y. And that's what you need to bottle anything in business down to. It's simple phrases like that. Absolutely. So, if someone's looking at a career change and, you know, they might want to get into to franchising, they say, oh, that sounds pretty good. I might get to see my family <laughs> a little bit. You know, yeah. how, how do they get in contact with you? Yeah. So, they can just call us on 1300 blinds. It's pretty simple. Um, that is pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know the name, you know the number, that's it. Brilliant. Oh, well, Jamie, thank you so much for coming in and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, doing some more work and uh, yeah, we'll see you again, no doubt, with 150 locations. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Anytime now. Yeah, just give us a call and we'll set one up. <laughs>